Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're taking a closer look at rent concessions. Rent concessions are a way of offering a discount to potential tenants without hampering the value of your property. Let's imagine that you're offering an apartment for rent at, say, $1,500 a month. You could offer a discount, but as soon as you do, then the lower rent appears on the rent rolls, and of course the expenses of the building don't change. So you'd be destroying profitability and therefore lowering the value of your property. A good alternative to lowering the rent is a rent concession or some other form of inducement to bring potential residents to your property. These inducements can take many different forms. It might be an amenity. It could be something free like a flat screen TV or perhaps a month of free rent. Free rent is often offered in the form of a 13-month lease for the price of 12 months. In the end, the paperwork that sometimes gets signed is a 12-month lease, and the folks get to stay an extra month for free. The landlord registers 12 months of rent at full price, and somehow the property maintains its value. Now, we've just gone through a pandemic, an acceleration of migration trends, an eviction moratorium, and the addition of 430,000 units of new apartments across the United States in 2021. The folks at Fannie Mae just published a new report on the state of multifamily housing in the U.S., and they take a look at rental concessions in that report. That report shows that the number of properties offering rental concessions declined in 2021 compared with 2020. Back in May of 2020, at the peak of the first wave of the pandemic, 16% of all properties were offering concessions. As of October 2021, that fell to about 7.4% of properties on a national basis for those ones offering concessions. The amount being offered as a concession remained fairly steady since the start of the pandemic, at 8.6% of the gross rent, or the equivalent of about one month of free rent. Prior to the pandemic, rental concession rates had been averaging about 6%, or about the equivalent of three weeks of rent. The top markets for new construction continue to be New York, Washington, Dallas, Austin, and Los Angeles. New York has more than 74,000 units of new construction. Washington, D.C. has more than 41,000 units underway, and Dallas, more than 31,000. Austin, Los Angeles, Seattle, and Phoenix follow with more than 24,000 each, and Atlanta, Orlando, and Houston round out the top 10. The cities offering the highest concessions are New York, San Francisco, Boston, and Miami. The highest concessions seem to be concentrated in the newest Class A properties. Concessions in Class A properties peaked at 9.9% back in March of 2021, and they still remain elevated at 9.2% as of Q4 this year. At the same time that inducements of increased rents have also increased on a national basis. Since January of this year, the national median rent has increased by staggering 17.8%. Put that in context, rent growth from January to November averaged just 2.6% in the pre-pandemic years from 2017 to 2019. Rents in November, though, have started to cool rapidly. The National Rent Index increased 0.1% during November. It's essentially flat. Rents actually fell in 53 out of the nation's top 100 markets. Now, there is a natural annual cycle for rents in some cities, particularly the northern cities, where fewer people move during the cold weather months. It's pretty normal in these markets for rental activity to fall from the end of November almost until the middle of March when the weather starts to warm up. The top 10 markets for rent growth in the nation actually consist really of four markets. North Las Vegas, Henderson, and Las Vegas took the number one, number seven, and number nine spots at 39% growth and 34% rent growth, respectively. The Phoenix suburbs of Glendale, Mesa, Gilbert, and Chandler also occupy four of the top 10 spots. Tampa and St. Pete's occupy two spots, and Spokane was the lone market in the Pacific Northwest, also with a 34% rent increase. The number of rental concessions being offered is modest against the backdrop of some of the highest rent growth in recent memory. We can expect 2022 to be fairly flat in rent growth. Moreover, we can expect expanded rent concessions in 2022, especially if vacancy sneaks up a little bit. When you consider that interest rates will have to increase in 2022, we may finally start to see some softening in the apartment space, but there's still way too much money in the system chasing too few opportunities, and unless we see a reduction In liquidity in the lending markets, I don't expect to see much change for the first half of 2022 in the multifamily apartment market. In fact, we're in a period where the yield curve is inverted. Short-term interest rates are in fact higher than the yield on the 10-year treasury. That may reflect a sentiment that this bout of inflation is transitory. 
I personally don't agree with that. I don't see it as transitory at all. The Fed has stopped calling it transitory, and most economists now believe that higher inflation is here to stay at least for a while. That means that expenses will rise, salaries will rise, interest rates will definitely rise, and eventually rents will rise again too. So when you look at rents, also make sure to look at rental concessions and interest rates. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.